Coming up, I have 21 hidden iPhone tips that are actually useful, and I guarantee you don't know every single one. We're gonna go ahead and get started right now. If your iPhone is running low on battery, you can set up a shortcut where triple clicking the power button will turn on a grayscale mode on your screen. To turn this on, simply go into settings, accessibility, scroll down to accessibility shortcut, and then check color filters. If you have one of the newer iPhones and you wanna take a night mode photo, but you're only holding your iPhone with one hand and you can't reach the toggle, all you have to do is swipe up from the bottom of the screen and night mode is right there. Speaking of reaching stuff at the top of the display, if you do a little half swipe down, you can go into reachability if you need to reach anything at the top of the screen. In iOS 13, Apple moved the app updates into a hidden section of the app store. It's actually up where your profile picture is. But if you don't wanna ever worry about this again, go into settings, scroll down until you see iTunes and App Store, and then make sure app updates is turned on. And now your apps will update automatically when your iPhone is plugged in overnight. So dark mode on the iPhone is really cool, but it's not cool if you have to turn it on and turn it off every time you wanna use it. So to schedule dark mode, go into settings, and then go into display and brightness. And now you can turn on an option for automatic dark and light mode. I have it set so sunrise and sunset will turn on and off dark mode. You can also have a custom schedule with specific times if you'd like. If you have a folder on your home screen that you wanna change the name of, you can just do a haptic touch on it and then you can change the name by clicking rename right there. So inside the measure application, apart from being able to measure objects in AR, there's also a level, which in my opinion is a lot more practical. So if you click this button on the bottom right, you can see it says level, and you get a little bit of haptic feedback when your iPhone is level. So if I place it on my table, my phone buzzes as soon as it turns green. So uh, kind of cool that you can measure stuff using your iPhone's accelerometer. If you're inside Safari and wanna open a new incognito window, instead of clicking the tabs button, clicking private, and then clicking new tab, there's a much easier way to do this. So when you're on your regular Safari page, simply press and hold on the tabs button, and then press new private tab, and then a whole new incognito tab will open right there. So everyone knows that these bookmarks are fantastic in Safari. As soon as you open your web browser, all your favorite websites are just one click away. But what if you wanted them to be less than one click away? What if you wanted them to be directly on your home screen? Well, if you navigate to the said website you want to have a shortcut to and then click share, you can scroll down until you see add to home screen, click that, then click add. And now there is a brand new icon on your home screen. You can click that, it'll take you directly to that website. There's a really cool new gesture in iOS 13 if you wanna undo something you just did. So I'm gonna archive this email, but say I wanna get it back, I can take three fingers, swipe to the left, and now the email is back. This next one is really cool. So if you love playing games on your iPhone, but you hate looking at ads, there's a way to remove ads actually without paying. So as you can see, as soon as we jump into this game, there's a huge ad right at the bottom of the screen. And there's a really cool way to shut this off. So go into settings and then click on cellular and then choose the app that you wanna turn off ads for. In this case, it's called Pancake. So I'm gonna shut that off and then kill the application in the background. And now whenever you wanna use the application, simply shut off Wi-Fi. And now since that that application cannot access cellular data and your iPhone is shut off a of Wi-Fi, there is now no way for that game to access the internet and therefore it cannot send you ads anymore. Most people don't know this, but if you have a newer iPhone, you can actually add a secondary cellular plan on your phone. So inside settings, tap on cellular. As you can see, I already have two phone numbers here added. My phone numbers are blurred out for a reason. But if you don't have a secondary option, you can tap on add cellular plan. And then once you buy your plan, uh, either online or inside the store, you'll get a QR code and you can scan that right here. And it'll instantly be added into your eSIM profile on your iPhone. This is great for traveling if you want to use data, but you don't want to pay the over fees that your carrier at home has. So we're just over halfway through the video now. If you've made it this far, thank you. I really appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I definitely urge you to do that. I post new videos every week about technology, about Apple products. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, please click subscribe and also turn on post notifications so you don't miss whenever I upload a new video. This next one is for all you music lovers out there. So if you have a specific genre of music that you listen to on the regular, for me, that's rock music. I have a EQ setting in my music settings, which really makes the music sound better in my opinion. So inside settings, go down until you see music and then choose EQ. And I have mine set to rock. And you can mess around with all these and choose whichever EQ setting makes your music sound the best.
For the next tip, we're actually gonna stay inside music settings. So this happens to me a lot. I put my iPhone in my pocket, I have my AirPods connected, and then I move my iPhone a certain way in my pocket and my volume gets blasted all the way up to the highest level and my eardrums feel like they're gonna rupture. So inside music settings, you can actually set a volume limit, which I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna set it to about half. That way, if I put my iPhone in my pocket and I hit the volume up button, no matter what, the music will never go above that limit. So inside the notes app, if you create a new note, you can draw with just your finger if you click on this icon. But if you're drawing and you're taking handwritten notes, it's kind of crazy on here because there's no spacing and you can't really get a sense for how big this virtual piece of paper is. Well, luckily inside settings, you can turn this on. So if we go into settings here and then go into notes settings, you can click on lines and grids and choose whichever spacing you would like. And then when you go to create a new note, and you choose the handwriting option, as you can see, those lines show up on your screen and it makes it look a lot nicer. The iPhone has a great feature where if you're signing into different websites in Safari, it can actually save your passwords from all these different sites, but you may not know where to access those passwords. Luckily, you can just ask Siri, show me my passwords. And then after scanning your face with Face ID, it'll show every single one of your passwords here that you have entered in Safari. Safari in iOS 13 has a fantastic new downloads manager, but there is a setting that we should change. So if I go ahead and download something here, I'll just download an image. You can see that there is a new download section here at the top right. And when something has finished downloading, it now lives in two places. It lives inside the files app where it downloaded, but now you have this downloads thing here at the top of Safari and no matter what you do, it doesn't go away. So we're gonna change a setting that makes this go away as soon as you download whatever you need to. So go into Safari Safari settings and then click on downloads and then click on remove download list items and then make it upon successful download. So now whenever you download a file, it'll be stored on your iPhone, but it will be removed from the download list inside Safari. So this one is really cool. If you have a calendar event and you want to add a certain attachment to it, you can actually do that. So click on edit under your calendar event. You can click on add attachment and you can add any attachment that's on your phone in here. So I'll just check this image. And then as you can see, this image is now attached to my calendar event. This is very, very useful. So on the newer style iPhone lock screens, you have two shortcuts, one for the flashlight and one for the camera. But most people don't know to access the camera, you can still swipe, which is definitely a lot faster than waiting for the haptic touch uh, for this camera widget at the bottom right. So just swipe whenever you need to access the camera, it's much faster. If you have an Apple TV set up on the same network as your iPhone and you go into Control Center, automatically an Apple TV remote widget will be added into Control Center. And then when you wanna turn on your Apple TV and use it, just click on this and you can now swipe just like it's an Apple TV remote. If you're doing some math in the calculator app and you need to get the digit that you calculated, instead of opening the app, pressing and holding on the number and then clicking copy, there's a much easier way to do this. Just haptic to touch on the icon and then click copy last result. It's as easy as that. I think you guys would also enjoy checking out some of my other videos. So in my previous video, I talked about how I ditched my main phone, my iPhone 11 Pro Max for the cheaper $400 iPhone SE. It was a pretty interesting video to make, so I highly recommend you check that out. It'll be in the cards in the top right corner right now. So make sure to check that out. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Michael, and I'll see you in the next video.